Hello everyone, welcome to Sueño de Vida here in the cloud forest at Ecuador, our agroforestry land regeneration project. Today I'm going to talk a little bit about water management and uh, how to get some ideas to better manage water on your property. So even though we are here in a very rainy climate in the cloud forest and the subtropics, uh, the things I'm saying could pretty much apply to anywhere except a desert, anywhere where you have some rain. So I think it's a very good idea to keep your water systems very simple and very natural. So I'm just gonna give you a little tour of how we do things here to help give you guys some ideas for how you might uh, manage things on your property. So we have a long earthen trench that we simply dug out with shovel. Uh, it's about a half a meter deep. And it runs up here from our road past our houses and it shuttles uh, all the water that we don't want going close to our house um, down, away, okay? Now that's very similar to what you might find in an urban system where you've got gutters and then they just dump it into a sewer and it goes somewhere. Well, we don't have a sewer here, we're off the grid. So we have to take responsibility for what we do with our runoff. Uh, and so what we do is we've extended this trench and we've made a little wetland, okay? So this all looks very natural, this little wetland area here, but I actually dug this out several years ago. I stood here in this pit and took out shovel full and shovel full of, of earth. It only took me about two days, so it's not a big deal. Um, and then it's been grown over. We planted some really beautiful natural plants here. This is a paja toquilla, which is made for making roof material. And you can find different wetland climate plants, wetland plants that are suitable anywhere. A lot of places in, uh, in the temperate world, they use cattails. Uh, different plants that thrive in very wet environments, okay? So that's all you need to do is just basically dig out a, a hole, right? And then uh, plant some plants that are very suited to the wetlands because what they do is those root systems help to clean the water. So as the water comes down from the trench, let's review, here's the trench running up to the road. It comes into this little uh, wetland area. In a very, after a, a rain, this actually turns into a pond. It settles here for a little bit. The water is held here for a little bit. We had a rain last night, so we've still got some water over here um, being held. And then it's cleaned. It's cleaned by the root systems. You can see these plants have big root systems uh, that filter the water. I always keep some chopped up vegetation here at the bottom uh, to help to create a rich topsoil that I take out from my nursery. I'll tell you guys about that in a moment. We always make sure that we, we clean the water as it is uh, coming down. Uh, it's not like we have a lot of traffic or pollution here, but we just want to be responsible. We want to clean the water as it's coming down through our wetland system. And also, if you create a little home wetland, even if you just have a small slope in your yard, right, and you've got an area that's always kind of muddy and kind of wet, create a little wetland area. That's nature telling you, I want to be a wetland, right? You can have your own little mangrove in your yard. And what it does is it becomes a wonderful catch-all for all of this great soil. So topsoil is very prone to erosion because it's on the top and it's loose. And so in heavy rains, all this topsoil washes down and it's deposited here. So then at the beginning of the summer, at the beginning of the dry season, every year I come here with my wheelbarrow and I shovel out all of this amazing, beautiful, loose topsoil that is full of nutrients because it's been, you know, coming down, it's been settling here. I've got chopped vegetation in here to uh, feed microbes, to make this very good with microbes. So guys, it's a resource. It's not just water that needs to be shuttled away and then, you know, it's wasted. It just goes into a municipal sewer system. Your, your runoff can be a resource. If you create a filtration, create a little wetland for it, and it's not a big deal. Like I said, dig a hole, plant some plants. You can put rocks around it. You can make it as pretty as you want, but turn your wastewater or your runoff water into a resource. Catch it, conserve it, and then more than anything, come back later and get this soil. Put it in your containers. Look how beautiful it is. Put it in your garden. Yeah, it's great stuff, okay? So that's a very simple method, right? Just simply digging a trench, keeping it natural. We clean the grass out every once in a while. I'm not a big fan of putting pipes in the ground simply because, um, well, first of all, it's a lot of work and there's a lot of things to do in life besides put pipe in the ground. Um, and they also have a tendency to really get silted up. If you've got like a clayey soil or a silty soil, 
those pipes, they're going to get silted up and you have to take them out and it's a big deal. I think just creating a nice earthen trench and uh, cleaning it out once in a while, cleaning out the vegetation is a great idea. Now, another way to manage water is to have thirsty ground cover plants. This is a sweet potato vine. And so this is a low area on the land. And instead of just letting it get all muddy and, you know, nasty and difficult to walk in, we cover it with vining plants that are very thirsty and can soak some of that water up. And then finally, uh, our most sophisticated system here is we collect water from our roof. I'll show you guys this long pipe. So water comes from the gutters on the roof into this tank, and then it comes down to this pipe and it feeds our fish pond. And here we have a pond where we keep fish to, to eat. So you can also just keep decorative or pet fish, ornamental fish, if you like. It's a very, very pretty area. It adds a good element to your property. If you're, you know, far, you're like, my God, farming fish, I live in the suburbs, whatever. Well, just creating a bird bath or a fountain or a, a catchment system for water that then you can then use on your garden instead of always tapping the municipal system is also a great idea. So I'm not here to tell you that you, you know, need to create a big wetland with plants or that you need to have a fish pond. What I want to do is inspire you with uh, the ideas and the inspiration to do something with water. Maybe it's just simply something very simple where you have a gutter position to empty into a rain barrel and then that's the water you use to irrigate your garden instead of taking it from a hose, yeah? Be careful. I know there's some really nasty housing authority associations out there that don't want you saving water from your roof. God knows why. Um, so, you know, you might have to pirate it. You might have to just, just don't tell anybody. That's all you have to do. I mean, you know, you probably have a fence, right? Now, if your neighbors are being nosy and peeking over your fence, well, then they're trespassing, yeah? So don't be intimidated. Collect water. Do something good with water. Don't just treat it as like a waste because water is very precious. And figure out a way to work with the slope, the gravity, the forces on your land, the natural forces in your land to channel water in ways that work for you. But the point is, is that water is precious. Collect it, conserve it, Clean it, use it, don't let it go to waste.